Lara. Thank you all for watching and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to make a two-way skirt. I love two-way skirts. They are so much fun, very versatile. You can wear them either way, depending on what you want to combine them with. And one thing I also enjoy about two-way skirts is that since they are made of two layers of fabric, they're also a little bit warmer, which makes them perfect for the season. The sewing pattern that I have used for this two-way skirt was a sectioned skater skirt pattern. So either you already have one at home and you can use your own, or this exact pattern is also available on my homepage for a very affordable price. It comes as a package with multiple sizes starting at 5XS going through 6XL. There's also a pattern overview with a sizing table with measurements that determine the correct size and there's also the yardage. If you are new to sewing and if you're not familiar with digital sewing patterns, I recently made a video about how to use digital sewing patterns, so I will link the video here in the right corner and also in the video description. And now let's jump right into this. First, let's talk about the pattern. It's kind of a two-in-one pattern. You can make a regular skater skirt with a, a waistband that doesn't go all the way around the elastic, or you can use it for a two-way skirt and uh, in that case the waistband is a little bit wider. It will be all understandable during this tutorial. The pattern overview also includes the sizing table, so I always suggest instead of going for your regular size, checking the waist circumference here and deciding on which size you will need in order to have a product that fits you perfectly. And what you're gonna love about this pattern is that uh, the sizes that you download when you purchase this pattern are starting with 5XS and they go till 6XL, so it's very inclusive. And you have here an overview uh, for the skater skirt. It tells you how many pieces of which pattern part you will need and it also tells you that you're gonna need an elastic band and uh, then in the brackets it's always the amount of pieces you will need for the two-way skirt, so that makes it very easy. And uh, it tells you also the yardage. I just realized I have a mistake here in this calculation, so before I upload this video I will fix it, but uh, then you can go by the amounts here. And it also informs you that the pattern includes seam allowance and it tells you how long the skirt is in the back. So depending on what size you're gonna make, you might wanna make the skirt a little bit shorter, so you basically just shorten the bottom. Or if you want, you can make it a little bit longer, so you add a little bit here on the bottom. So now let's have a look at all the pieces that I cut out of the various fabrics that I'm gonna use for our today's two-way skirt. I laid out all the pieces the way they will be put together. So on the top row we have the front part which is folded in the middle. Then we have the side sections and the back part. Um, that is also folded in the middle. And then above that is the waistband that's going to be in the darker shade of orange and my elastic band. And here on the bottom again the front part folded in the middle. Then uh, two pieces for the side part and one back part folded in the middle. So as a first step I'm gonna grab the fabric for the waistband. So the wrong side is here facing up and I will fold it in the middle and I will pin together the side at an angle. Next I will pin together the elastic. So the way I like doing it is I've place it on the folded fabric for the waistband and let's say this is where the seam is going to be and the elastic band should have the same width. So I fold it so that one end is a little bit longer and then I pin the folded part here and then I fold it over so that this end is aligned with where the seam is and that way the elastic band will have exactly the same width like my waistband and that's really important in order to get a really good result. I will sew this end together with a simple straight stitch 
and for the elastic band I will sew this together here where the end of one layer is with a very dense zigzag and then I will also sew these ends together and then this side so everything will be very securely sewn in place. Now let's have a look at the other pieces for the skirt. Now let's start with the back part of the skirt. So both sides are equally long but when you look at the side part one side is a little bit longer and one is a little bit shorter. So what you want is the longer side uh, to be aligned with the back section but you also want to make sure that the wrong side is going to be facing up. So this is for this side so I'm just gonna pin this in place. <laughs> And now that this side is pinned in place, I can fold it over and I will align the other side with the back part and I will also pin it in place at an angle. But this time from this side, from the yellow side. Now I will grab the front section, so I'm gonna place it here on the table so that the right side is inside and the wrong side is facing up. It's really easy to see on this fabric with the print and I will simply pin it to the side sections. All right, everything pinned in place. So I will go to my sewing machine and you have a few possibilities how to sew this together. So you can use simply a straight stitch because this does not need to stretch out. And since this is a stretchy jersey with about 8% of spandex, it will also make sure that it keeps its shape. Or if you have a over, uh, like an overlock stitch on your sewing machine, you can use that one. Make sure that you keep the correct distance from the edge according to the seam allowance on the pattern. Another possibility would be if you have a serger, you can simply use a serger. So before I do that, I will also pin together all the other pieces for the second layer. Here we have it. And now let's go to the sewing machine. Here we have the waistband sewn together on one end and the elastic band. I will now turn the waistband to the right side and I will fold both seams to one side so that it's as, as flat as possible. And then I'm gonna grab the elastic band and pull it over it. I will make sure that the place where it's sewn together is gonna be a little bit further from this seam so that there are not too many layers together. And I will start pinning it in place like so. And one more thing I will do, I will fold the other side so that I have the seam on one side and I will mark here the middle. Uh, I want to have the seam exactly in the center of the back part. So I'll make here a little mark with a little cut so that's gonna be the mark where it's gonna be aligned with the center of the front parts of the skirt. So now let's have a look at the skirts. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I'm gonna sew this in with stretchy overlock stitch. I will be sewing from the side where I have the elastic band and for that I will use a black thread and from the bottom I'm gonna use any leftover bobbins that I still have where I have enough thread without irritating my sewing machine because sometimes when you have only that little thread on a bobbin some sewing machines start to do weird things. By the way, if you need to learn how to fix faulty stitches, I have a video about that so I can link it here in the right corner. And now let's have a look at the skirts. Here we have the skirt with yellow and with orange in the back. So what I did was when I was done with sewing all pieces together, I folded always the seam to one side and I have sewn it in place. And because I have a center part, I made sure that both seams were facing inwards, like towards the center. 
and I did the same on the back and then I have sewn through the edge with a straight stitch only I increased the length I did it a little bit differently on this skirt this time I made sure that the seams were facing outwards because once I will align both skirt layers together there would be too much fabric so this way when I align this I will have one seam on one side and one seam on the other side it's just gonna be so much nicer to sew this together and I have sewn through here with black thread again a little bit increased stitch length regular straight stitch so now all these seams are sewn in place it looks neat and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab one of these two skirts and I'm gonna flip it to the wrong side and now I will grab this skirt with the yellow sections and I will pull it over the other skirt like so so that the right sides are always facing each other and I will make sure that I put in a few pins here where the seams align and this is what I was talking about here you can see that it's really nice and flat because on the orange black skirt the seam is facing into the opposite direction than on the lighter skirt so I'm gonna put pins in where all the parts meet on the top and that's enough because I only want it to be held in place but I'll be pinning around the entire bottom edge then so let's do this first and now I'll grab the skirt and turn it upside down like so and I will start aligning the bottom so first I will align and pin the skirt together only where I have these seams And now for this step I'm gonna need a little bit more space and my sewing table is so small so I'm just gonna explain it and I'm gonna do it then on my floor. So I will smoothen everything nicely and I will make sure that the seams are nicely aligned so that the skirt doesn't wrinkle. And then I'll be pinning together here the edges of the bottom edge. It doesn't matter from which side you pin them, just be consistent and I'll do that around the entire bottom of the skirt but before you do that you definitely have to check whether the skirt is nicely flattened so that once you turn the skirt to the right side that you don't end up with one side being a little bit shorter and pulling on the other side because these parts need to be exactly equal in order to get good result so I'll do that and then we'll take it from there all right, so I've pinned around the entire edge at an angle. So now I will go to my sewing machine and I will sew around the edge with a regular straight stitch. I will keep a bit more distance than usual because the way the pattern was designed was for the skater skirt where instead of sewing two layers together you simply fold the edge inwards and then you can sew around either with cover lock or with a stretchy st a zigzag if you have just a regular household sewing machine but uh, this is a little bit different because we are sewing two layers together so in order to have the very same length like I would achieve with my skater skirt I have to sew a bit further from the edge so in this case it's gonna be two centimeters however if you don't mind that the skirt will be one centimeter longer than the original pattern then you can go ahead and sew in the regular distance from the edge so let's do that Alrighty, so I have sewn around the entire edge and now I will cut back this seam allowance because that's quite a lot of fabric so you can grab of course regular scissors but I will uh, use these zigzag scissors because I simply like the way it looks and I'm gonna cut about the half of the seam allowance away. <laughs> And here is what it looks like. So of course if you have a serger and if you have been sewing around the bottom edge with a serger that step will fall away because um, the overlock already cuts the fabric back. And now we're gonna turn the skirt to the right side. And the way I like doing it is I will always go to the places where I have the seams and I will make sure that I flatten everything and I'll grab my pins and I will also make sure that the way I roll the fabric in place so that I can't see more of the other pattern from 
one side. So basically, no matter how I turn the fabric, that I will always only see the color where I'm at. So, and I will start putting pins in already. And when I'll be done, you can simply go uh, to your iron and simply press and that will be it. I personally like rather having an additional seam in order to secure everything in place. That's just my personal preference, but again, you don't have to do it. If you straighten everything and make sure everything lies flat and nicely, all you have to do is to go ahead and iron around the entire edge. You really want to take your time with this so that you get a result that will be as neat as possible. So I always like rolling the fabric a little bit. And when I put the pins in and I, I like turning the fabric to the other side, just to make sure that I can see the other fabric from the other side. And then I keep putting my fingers in, flattening the fabrics around the seam and doing this as long as necessary in order to pin in place the entire edge. And when I will be done, I will go ahead and I will sew around the edge with a regular straight stitch because this is again something that doesn't have to stretch out. So a regular straight stitch will do. So basically I made sure that you don't need a serger for this tutorial. So if you have just a household sewing machine, you'll be fine. But I probably already said that. <laughs> And here you have it. This is what the edge looks like once it's been finished from both sides. Of course, it's going to look better once it's been pressed. And the next step is now to pin the waistband in place. So I already pinned here the places together where we have the seams. And I also made a little cut on the center of the front and the back because that's going to make it easier to align the waistband. And since the waistband is one waistband for both sides, it does not really matter from which side you're going to be pinning it and sewing it in place. I've decided I'm going to do it the way that the light skirt is, is inside. So I will turn the waistband to the right side like so. I will align the seam of the waistband here with the center of the back part. And I will pin it in place as always at an angle. Now I will grab the skirt and turn it around like so. And I will grab the waistband and make sure that I have the center that I marked with this little cut and I will align it with the center of the front part. And I will again pin it in place. And I guess the rest is pretty self-explanatory. I have to pin it to the complete edge. So I will make sure that all edges are neatly aligned and I will keep putting in pins at an angle. So I'm working from the inside of the skirt. That's my personal preference. That's how I like doing it. And here's what it looks like. So I will go to my sewing machine and I will sew the waistband on this side with stretchy overlock stitch, which is exactly the same stitch that I have used when I have been sewing the elastic band on the other end of the waistband. So the waistband has been sewn in place and I'm just gonna pull it out like so. And I will adjust the skirt that I start pinning it in place in the back. So the way we have sewn the elastic band in was from the right side. Now I'm gonna fold the elastic band inwards and then I fold the waistband one more time. Just have to adjust it a little bit. And then you will align it with the seam and that's exactly the width of waistband that you need. And this is a little bit thick here, so it's a little bit tricky to pin it in place here in the back but it gets easier around the edge where you don't have the seam. So I'm gonna do the same everywhere around the entire edge. Cool. 
So and here's what it looks like once it has been pinned in place. You just have to make sure that it almost covers the seam where you have sewn the waistband on. So when you're gonna be done that you can't see it. So I personally rather put in more pins. You can always pull them out while sewing, but just to keep everything in place because this should be really neat once you've finished. And now that the waistband has been pinned in place, I can finish up. So I will sew around the bottom edge, quite close to the edge with a stretchy straight stitch. You could also use stretchy zigzag, or if you have a cover lock, you could also use cover lock stitch. So for example, you would have from this side two seams and from the other side, the overlock side. Let me show you what it looks like. So you would have from one side this and this would be on the other side. So that could also end up being quite decorative. That's of course up to you. But again, I decided to use stretchy straight stitch because it's going to be pretty simple. And here we have the final result. So here we have the orange and black side. And here is what the light side looks like. I personally find that this darker orange shade looks good with all the colors, but if you wanted to, you could also make the waistband of two pieces uh, so that you would have a color that matches this color scheme on this side. So I have used this pattern. This is the white elastic band that has quite a lot of seam allowance on one side. That's because that's where I have sewn on the elastic band and then I folded it inwards. This is normally for the skater skirt. So I show you what it looks like when you have a skirt that has right and wrong side. So it folds inwards so that the seam is covered by the elastic band. So that's why it's narrower. Now you will need two pieces like this, but on one piece, you have to fold the seam allowance inwards so that you end up having the same seam allowance around the entire waistband. So that would be one part for whichever side. And then on the other side, you would keep the pattern as it is. Again, because on one side you will sew in the elastic band and when you fold it in, you'll need more seam allowance. And that's an option too. So you can choose whatever works for you, whatever looks better for you. I personally wanted to have a different color, especially also because this color matches this orangey shade on the sugar skull. So I thought, why not? It's going to be a little bit more colorful. Let me also show you quickly this skater skirt that I made with the very same pattern. So I used the narrower waistband and here's what it looks like. I've been working with my cover lock as you can probably see, and I decided to use a contrast shade for the stitches because I thought it would look good on this stretchy fabric that looks kind of like denim. So I have sewn all the pieces the same way. I have folded these seams to one side, then I have sewn through with cover lock stitch, um, then I have sewn on the top the waistband exactly the same way I did it on this two-way skirt, but the difference was that the waistband was narrower, so the seam is here covered with the elastic band. And here's what the bottom looks like. So I have folded the edge inwards and then from the right side I have sewn around the edge with the cover lock stitch. I made sure I was sewing exactly around the edge of this side so that the this stitch would cover the edge because then it looks really neat and clean from the inside. So with this pattern you can have a lot of fun. So that's how I made my two-way skirt. I had a lot of fun with this project. And one thing that also made me happy in addition to the fact that I was making a new piece for myself was that I could use up some scraps of fabric. So all these pieces of fabric on this side are fabrics 
that were laying in the box lonely and they were just not enough for an entire piece on their own but all together gave me this fun layer and I've been wearing the skirt turned to this side quite a lot in August because I have matching tops several actually so one of them is made entirely of this fabric one has orange yellow and this fabric also and one is apple green on the back and has this sugar skull print in the front and either of these tops looks amazing with the skirt and people would literally stop me on the street and compliment me so if you have any scraps of fabric that are a little bit bigger that they would be enough for each section of the skirt and that they go well together definitely give it a try you're gonna have a lot of fun you can use up some fabric and have a really original piece as I said at the beginning, the pattern is available on my homepage. And if you guys are going to make yourself your own two-way skirt and if you're going to post photos on Instagram, please tag me. I love seeing what you guys created. It always makes me so happy. And I will link my Instagram account also in the video description. And that's going to be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you guys very much. God bless you and see you soon. Bye.